Hello and welcome to part four. So let's get in to the fire today. And this is this part in your body, and I can feel the heat building, where sometimes you know you want to change something and you've worked around it and you've tried different things and you've almost had that softly, softly approach with it. And of course, always do this with your own boundaries. And I've had this in my life sometimes when I've had to get into the emotion of it. And this, I guess, if I'm being really honest, even though anybody who's a Scorpio is like, oh, I'm not a Scorpio. I am. Um, I need to move that. I'm interested. I want to make a change. You know, that sort of casual approach into igniting and reconnecting that fire, that passion, that anger, that injustice, that outrage, that mission. And the thing with imposter syndrome is, let's say you continue in this way of, I'm just so grateful to be here, or I'll just stand on the sidelines and like not question anything. And I I can't believe that I'm here. You know, constantly being in that competition winner of like, ah, I can't believe it, I'm here. In those moments, somebody always continues to win because of your weakness or because of your sense of playing small. And when I came to this, I was thinking, whoa, no, I thought actually uh, be playing small meant that I was being a nice person. But the aim ultimately for me is not just to be a nice person. Yes, of course, I want to be kind and friendly and um, a great person to be around. Of course, I want to be a good human being. But I also want so much more. I want to create change. I want to help people. I want to create an impact. I want to tell stories. I want to add a new flavor, a new perspective. I I want to create ripples in, in my life. And I noticed that switch that was happening when I was so consumed with the gratitude of being in there that other things around that were suffering. And this could happen on a very, very small level or it could happen on a very big level. And I'm going to talk about the Me Too movement right now, um, but there's loads of cases of this. I'm sure there were many people who were on big, Hollywood film sets that were just so grateful to be there that they had to turn a blind eye. They had to not question things because it would create be creating too much of a ruckus and then maybe you would lo- actually go ahead and lose your position. And so when you're thinking about where you go next, it's important to really tune in with all of those feelings and thoughts and that constant whirring of like, oh, maybe it's because of this, X, Y, and Z, to what is that getting in the way of? And therefore, who is winning? I used to see it so often in terms of finances. I got so obsessed with the, the gratitude that I felt for being in there. I didn't get paid enough or I didn't ask or... I didn't negotiate my expenses. So I ended up paying for things that other people in the cast or the company or the organization or the production had already covered. And so I wasn't seeing myself in that light. I do now. I mean, you know, you only have to make that mistake a few times. And I'm saying that with a smile because it was definitely more than a few times. But as we go through, you realize that the more you play small, 
the more that you become like a noddy smiley, like, ah, just so grateful, somebody else is going to win. And this is not to say that you go in going, right, I'm going to take all and I, I want to be the winner of all of it. It's about collaboration. It's about fairness. It's about doing the right thing. But equally, there will be some people out there that will love that you have imposter syndrome because it keeps you in a box. It keeps you much more manageable and much more predictable and much more malleable to what they whatever they need you to be. And quite frankly, now is not that time. Now is not that time just to say, oh, you know, I don't mind and I'm so happy to be here and all of these things. Because you could be that one person who spots the thing that's happening in the organization and going, why has that always been the situation? And we've realized that in so many different ways from different body types, um, that doesn't work. Why, why has that not been considered? Or sometimes you'll see things that have been designed with by somebody who has one perspective. They haven't thought about the client or the customer. And it could be something as simple as like they put a light switch and the person can't reach it. Like, what? Why, why have you not thought about this? Why have you not incorporated this into your design? And so I want you to get some fire and reconnect with your vision, with where you're going next. If you want the big energy plan, this is a really good uh, short course that you can do that really cements what is next for you. And add some emotion into it. Because being stuck in this sense of, I'm going to get found out, oh my goodness, I can't believe that I'm here. Essentially, it's from a point of being static and not not using your power, not using your voice. And you are much more valuable if you can bring that to the table. I hope something resonated for you today. If it did, um, let me know. You can use that messenger button on my website and I'll see you tomorrow for part five.